Hey, it's Randy from UT Status. It's another episode of Ditch the Box. Today, I'm gonna to show you the Yealink T58A. You've already seen this phone. In fact, I've got another video on it that's been very popular over the years. But what I'm really gonna show you is actually the new um, Teams user interface, um, which has been out for a little while now. As you can see, this is the home page. The home page displays a clock, uh, the date and day on the left. It shows you who you are and your phone number at the top. Uh, and of course, it's got big buttons to navigate around frequently used features, such as the calls app, uh, the people or contacts, uh, the calendar, and of course, voicemail. You can also get at these areas down here in some respect. Um, this is also the voicemail key. Uh, down here, you can also see that I've got the big sit button. And if you've read my blog posts, or in fact, I probably have a video on it, you, you'll note that I have the ability to switch between the Teams UI and the SIP interface. So this is just the standard SIP interface, which can be registered against an SBC or indeed a service online uh, and enable some business continuity. And I'm just gonna pop back into the Teams mode because that's what this is all about. So the UI is pretty responsive. If you hit the calls button, it actually pops into the calls uh, area and gives you a big dial pad and of course your favorites and then your recent contacts. At any time, if you want to go back to the home page, you can just hit home there. You can also navigate around to different areas of the UI. As you can see, I can pop into the calendars app just there. The more button, usually gives you more stuff, so let's go ahead and press it. So you can see I've got some more things that I can choose. I can hit that and go straight to the People app, and I can hit that to go into Voicemail. But what you can also do is if you see here, you've got the Reorder button, so I'm just gonna press Reorder. So these little three uh, lines on the left, sometimes it's a hamburger menu, sometimes it's a slider. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold it, and then I'm just gonna drag it up. I'm gonna put the people right next to calls. And you can see the people have actually appeared on the bottom bar next to calendar. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with voicemail. I'm just gonna pop that into the main page right at the back. And you can see it's pop voicemail. So you've got calls, people, calendar, voicemail, and more. And then I'm just gonna press save and that's just gonna give it a quick Teams app reboot. And as you can see, I've now got the sit button and home button precariously close together. Um, be nice if I could pop that down a little bit. I guess the T58 doesn't really need a voicemail button there because I can get out voicemail just here. Anyway, as you can see, so what I might do is go ahead and further re reorder that and take voicemail and drag it back into more. And again, press save. It gives the actual app a little reboot. It takes about 10 seconds. And as you can see, I've got the home button, which is a little bit further away from SIP, um, which is nice. It means there's a little bit of separation. And if I just go ahead and press the down arrow there, it actually collapses that more menu. So I don't need the voicemail up on the same bar because I've also got a hotkey. Uh, an actual physical button for voicemail as well. So of course I can go into the, the People app and see my contacts. Um, I can change the list, so all contacts to training list and, and, and so forth, whatever you've got pinned there. The calendar just shows my diary uh, from Exchange, of course. And as I've shown you, the More button there. Within the calendar as well, you can scroll up and down to see meetings you know, way ahead of time. If I select it, you can see the details on the right and you can go ahead and see more and it gives you some additional information. Of course, your join button, um, audio conferencing phone number, and in my case, I've also got a cloud video interrupt um, service integrated with my tenant, so that shows it there. When you select a meeting, you can join it or you can edit. I'm just gonna scroll down for now and you can see the participant list. You can view the series if it is a series, or you can cancel this occurrence if you want to. If 
I wanted to, I can just go in there and select Marty and I can place a call. And just go back, it takes me back to the meeting. Now, if I want to edit the meeting, I can go ahead and do that. I can see uh, the presence of all the people that were in the meeting. Of course, I can add participants. I can change the subject. I can change the time and date. I'm just going to exit that, and then I'm going to press discard. You can also, from the calendar app, actually schedule a new meeting. So again, just give it a title, add to participants, choose whether it's a channel meeting, uh, the date and time, uh, choose a location, whether it's got any reoccurrence or repetition going. You can also choose how you show the meeting and then give it a description. I'm just going to cancel that for now and press discard. You can also see you've got hamburger menu there and that opens up the little side bar and it shows you who you are. If you go into who you are, obviously it shows you some additional information about yourself and your contact. You can change your availability status if you want to. So I can hit that and choose to set myself as a way. If you've got a desktop client also signed in um, as this user, you can go in here and it will actually look for uh, a PC that's connected via Bluetooth. It'll try and find the, uh, the PC that's already signed in as that user. In my case, it's not finding anything, so I'm just going to press back. You can also get at hot desking. So from here, you can sign in as another user and um, hot desk on this phone, even though it's signed in as me but I'm just gonna cancel that. You can also go into what's new and see the release notes for the phone UI. So I'm just gonna hit that and give it a second and it will go into the docs page and show me what's new in Teams desk phones. As you can see, this is the interface from August 31st. So a little over a month ago, you can see it's got some additional information about you know the home screen and that kind of thing. Another thing you can do if you go into settings, you can change it from a dark mode to light mode. I happen to like dark mode. I think it looks uh, really striking on the phone itself. So I'm just going to leave that enabled. I can manage delegates. So if I've got a boss admin type scenario, I can manage that. I can I can view my profile. I can go into calling and change my forward settings, voicemail, um, go and change my greeting and that kind of thing. I can also here, I can enable and disable notifications and I can enable and disable the home screen. So the home screen is that first UI or that, that kind of first screen where you've got the clock and date and time over on the left. And on the right, you've got those big buttons. So if you turn that off, you don't get a home screen. All you get is the bar down the bottom with the, the, the various um, shortcut keys to get into those areas. I happen to like the home screen. Um, the home screen is, is great, just having the big buttons there and a big clock. And of course, having a nice big clock on your desk is never a, a, a bad thing. Um, so you can um, find out when it's time for your next appointment or anything like that, but it also goes hand in hand with notifications. So with notifications enabled, you actually get um, to see with notifications enabled, you can also see, you know, missed calls, um, what's upcoming in your diary, new appointments and that kind of thing actually displays below the clock uh, on the home screen itself. You can also go in and report an issue. If you ha happen to find an issue with the UI, hit report an issue and you can actually report, send the logs um, and a screenshot to Microsoft so they can uh, investigate and, and help you fix something. Of course, from there, you can also get into device settings and get at additional information such as the language, time and date, uh, Bluetooth information, and a lot more. Right, so I'm just gonna go back into the home screen and I'm going to, from another phone, I'm actually going to place an incoming call into this device. Right, so as you can see, I've got an incoming call from Marty McFly. I can choose to accept or decline. I'm just going to accept 
and I'm gonna mute so I don't get any feedback loops. So you can see this is what happens when you're in a call. So of course I've got a hard key, but I've also got soft key for mute there. I can obviously see my own picture and a picture of the person that's called me. From here, I can also choose whether I want to toggle between speaker or go audio off. I'm just gonna um, press to, to go out of that. And of course, I've got a more button so where I can actually place the call on hold, transfer, I can actually park the call, or I can get out the dial pad. So if I'm, you know, for instance, dialing uh, uh, through an IVR or a conference ID or something like that, um, I can get the dial pad and easily get um, to that area. I'm just gonna park the call. So if I press park, so when the call is parked, you can see you've got a nice big number for parking bay. So I could potentially, you know, shout across the room and um, tell a colleague that I've parked the call and it's at bay number 10. All right, so off screen, I'm just gonna go ahead and retrieve that and the call has ended. I'm just gonna go ahead and place a call, just hitting the calls app. You can see I've got my favorite contacts here. I'm just gonna call Marty back. And pop it on mute so we don't get a feedback loop. All right, so if I want to transfer the call, I can either hit the physical button or I can go into more and then press transfer to get into the transfer UI. So for call handling, I can obviously choose the volume up and down I can pop it over to my headset if I have one connected. I can place the call on hold or I can transfer. I can also, from here, I can place the call on hold or transfer and then get out the park button or the dial pad. I can also, from here, get out the participants list. So you can see it's a call between Marty and myself. I can see that they're both muted. I can, from here, I can also go ahead and add someone. So if I just start searching and I've added and I press go, it will actually place a call to the Teams room. And as you can see, I've now got three participants in the list. So it's taken this from a one-to-one -one call to multi-party call or a conference call. So if I tap on a contact, you can see I've got the ability to pin them. I can make them att an attendee. So change them from um, a presenter. Obviously, the Falcon is an internal user to this uh, tenancy, um, but I can go ahead and make them an attendee. I can view their profile, or I can just go ahead and kick them out of the call. And of course, from here, I can just simply end the call. And then once you've ended, it takes you back to the calls app. From there, I can just go ahead and press home to get back to the home page. Also from the home screen, if you tap your picture, you can get at settings, uh, what's new, or you can actually do org switching. I'm just gonna hit settings for now, and it gets you back to the normal settings thing. It would be kind of nice from the home screen itself to be able to change your status, but you know, if you go into the calls app, for instance, and then hit the hamburger menu, you can change back to available. Right, that's it, that's the new UI. It's been out for a little while, but I thought I'd, uh, I'd uh, take a moment to actually take you through uh, some of the newer settings and give you a little tour. Um, if this bit has been useful, take a moment to like and or subscribe. Um, definitely appreciate that. And I'll see you next time on Ditch the Box.